Hi there, Linda Goodall here with another Hatch Scratching. When I first started playing with the borders in the monogramming toolbox, I thought it'd be a really great way to incorporate shapes libraries like we see in other programs. However, one of the drawbacks of using the monogramming border to double as a shapes library is that it seems to create a predefined space to allow for a monogram. Well, you know, that's a good idea if you want to use it as a monogram border, but not good if you want to use it for something else entirely. So let me show you what I mean while we recreate this freestanding lace candy cane. Now, we're not going to do the whole thing. We'll do the base of it, and then you can figure out the rest. I'm going to create a new document. And then I'll go to the lettering and monogramming. And we'll pick borders. Now, if you saw the previous video, you saw how to create a border and how to modify it and do all kinds of fun stuff. I'm just going to add a simple border here. I'm going to pick one from a library I created called Cookie Cutters. These were all traced from Cookie Cutters. Some of them were traced over 20 years ago and I just kept adding to my graphic file. So I'm going to find the candy cane. We have two of them here. Well, three of them. One, two of them are duplicates. So we'll click that one and I'll put it in there. And it is ginormous. Did you see how our grid changed? And if we look up here on the size, it is 3,508 millimeters tall. It's not going to fit any hoop. And this is a satin border on here and just looks like a running stitch. So what we need to do to resize that is first we need to change it to a running stitch because Hatch won't let us shrink something that much with a satin border. So I'll change it to a running stitch and then change it to 90 millimeters in height. And then press 0 to zoom it up to actual size. And let's check it. Yeah, it's 90 millimeters. So now we have our shape to work on. I don't think we can modify shapes in here. If we add another border, let's see what happens if we add another border. See, So we can't work on it in there, because when we add another border, it just adds another ginormous one. So let's undo. Press 0 again. That's all we can do in the monogramming toolbox and the borders. So we're going to have to do all of our work the normal way. But it's really not that much different from working with the borders tool. So let's click on it. And we need to break it apart and ungroup it, even though it's only one piece we still have to do those steps. Now we have an editable object. So I'm going to create an offset. So we can create multiple borders in the Edit Objects toolbox using the Create Outlines. And I just want to do an offset of a half a millimeter. So this is going to, I'll leave that as a run. I'm going to change this to a fill. We'll do it to Tommy. We'll do spacing of 3 millimeters. And then we'll turn off the underlay. And we'll change the angle to 45 degrees. And see, did I? Yes. We want travel on edge if it's not already checked. So what that's going to do is it's going to sew an outline. Then it's going to put down a light fill. And I made that light fill just slightly bigger so that it can kind of grab onto that edge and have something to hold on to. We don't have any um, compensation when we have travel on edge. So that's a cheater way of doing that. So now I'm just going to duplicate this again, Control-D. And I'm going to change the angle to 135. There we have our cross grid. There's our basic grid for doing what I call instant lace. I'm not going to show you how to do old kind of lace. It's just too time consuming. But this is a great way to do instant lace. Now some people will take those two layers and duplicate them so that there are four layers of the grid. I don't always do that, especially on a small piece. This is about, you know, three and a half inches tall, so it's not a big deal. So now we have to make some decisions. If we go back to our other candy cane, you can see that I've gotten kind of fancy here. Let's turn off tree view. 
And after I've done my cross grid, let's change all that to blue so we can see it. Well, we can just see it right there. So this is how far we are in the other design. And what I've done here is I've just drawn some shapes to get my stripes. And I've used a curved fill. So the contour fill on these shapes. And then I've just put a, another steel stitch border on there. Looks like I missed one down here. And worked my way around. We're going to not do that part in here. Let's go back to our candy cane design. And we need to put a border on here. And we need to put a hanger. So I'm going to go back to my original outline. Duplicate that. Control D. Change this to a satin border. I believe I called it a steel stitch earlier. That's what I'm used to calling it in other programs. So let's change some stitch effects. We'll change it to a double zigzag. Just to make sure we tack down all those layers. And we'll leave the pull comp at that. And we want to make that one thinner. We made some of the other ones, the stripes on our other candy cane, a millimeter and a half. I think we'll leave that at two. Now we need to put a hanger on here. Before we do that, notice that we have four layers. We can do four layers in the border tool. In the, the monogramming toolbox on that border tab, you could do four layers. And we, if we could have made this this size, if we'd had a, an option to set the size, we could have done all of this in the border tool, and it wouldn't have been really that much harder. It would have been quite quick. All we've done really is simulate what we could have done in the border tool. Now we need to add a little hanger. And to do that, I'm just going to use the circle tool, and we'll use the outline, and we'll just create a little circle here. And I want to probably put it underneath that border. You could have it on top. doesn't really make that much difference. Let's change a little bit on that one. We'll make that a center run and a double zigzag just to make sure. Because this is going to be freestanding lace, we want to make sure it doesn't fall apart. And maybe make it a little smaller. So there's our basic lace shape. And what the grid does is it kind of simulates a fabric. So we could put other little elements on here. We could digitize some swirls. We could digitize the stripes. And they would all just go before these last two pieces. And that's how you can take a shape and turn it into lace. Now, granted, a candy cane is pretty simple. But they're not all that easy to draw. So they have all those nice curves. And having one at your fingertips in a toolbox is just nice. So to finish this, you just stitch it on water-soluble stabilizer and rinse it out. I would just kind of dip it a couple times and then let it dry and you have yourself a nice little ornament that you could hang on a tree or insert into a card and give it to somebody as a gift. So I hope this has given you some ideas of what you can do with some of the built-in tools in Hatch. You don't have to draw everything from scratch. You don't need a piece of artwork if you have a starting piece that you can work from. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and comment below. Bye!